Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time it is, where you are, and I just feel I need to greet you. Well, we give God the praise for the day that the Lord has made, in which we have made up our minds to rejoice and be glad in it. Did you hear the sermon of last week? Were you with us? The reason I'm referring to it is because of the feedbacks that I've got from the program of last week. Leave it to God. Well, if you didn't watch that, you can still go on YouTube, on Facebook, on Spreaker, and on my Twitter and listen to that message. I think it will bless you. You know, people do all kinds of things to us. And the natural reaction is to want to fight back and get even. I think that message will help you a lot. To just leave things to God and watch God fight your battles for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Big, big, big thank you to those of you who listen to us on Bishop Etiola's podcast. As I always say, you can access my podcast by downloading the podcast app on the Google Play Store, or you can download it directly from Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. You can download it to your Android phone. You can download it to your iOS phone. And what happens is anytime we go on the air live, you will be notified immediately so you don't miss any live episodes. Please do that today and help me tell somebody about that great opportunity. We also want to thank those that are watching us on RBS TV 13 in the great country of Guyana. And we are on there every Saturday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. local time now. And those also who are watching us in 23 Caribbean island countries through Mercy and Truth TV in the great country of Jamaica. And that is every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 local time. And every Wednesday morning at 1.30 a.m. That's the local time also in Jamaica. But we're not done with Jamaica yet. You know, Jamaica is my favorite country. And they proved it to you that I didn't choose a wrong country to be my favorite. A big thank you to those who are watching us on Logic One TV channel 112 in the great country of Jamaica. Three times a week, our programs are aired on that station. What can I say but to say God bless you to the people who own these stations, to those who work in these stations. May God watch over you. May God keep you. May God bless you. May God open more doors for you. Oh, may God give you long life and prosperity in the process. We also want to say to the great countries of Jamaica and Guyana, may God give you peace in your countries. Please don't forget to listen to us on our own radio station. You heard it right. Our own radio station, Fresh Waves Radio. We are on as I speak right now. Because we are on 24-7. And you can listen to a variety of programming that will surely bless you and lift you up spiritually. On the air, 24-7. Fresh Waves Radio. And if you choose not to do that, you can either download the app or download or watch us on the website, freshwavesradio.com. You know, I made a statement now that must have startled some of you. I said, if you choose not to do that, so what other option do you have? That's the good news I promise you today. And that's Fresh Waves TV. Yes, we are on the air and we are live. Actually, we've been there for over three months now. I've just been quiet about it. 
But uh, my elders and my pastors feel, why, why be quiet? It's time to talk about it. Well, Fresh Waves TV is on the air. And just like the radio station, you can download the app for Fresh Waves TV. There is an Android app and there is an iOS app that you can download. And if you choose not to download the apps, you can listen on the website, freshwavestv.com, just like you can also listen to Fresh Waves Radio on freshwavesradio.com. I am so happy about this open door, and I think you will be blessed. You will be refreshed. One of my elders will always come to me and say, Bishop, I'm enjoying Fresh Waves TV. He said the programs come out loud and clear, and I think you will be blessed. Help us spread the word as we try to harvest souls for God. Well, coronavirus thought it can lock us in, but God used coronavirus to open doors for us that we never ever thought will be open for us. Are you ready for today's program? You're going to be blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here we are again, thanking you for the doors that you are opening for us. We thank you also for all your people that are here settled down today to hear a word from God. I pray you will give me the anointing to speak and you'll give them the anointing to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. My admonition for today, ladies and gentlemen, is the full text of a sermon I preached to those who worshipped in our sanctuary two Sundays ago. You know, we break ourselves up one week. Some people are at home watching the program and another week they are in the church listening to the sermon. But this was a sermon I preached to those who are in church with us two Sundays ago. Most of you that are watching this morning, if not all of you, maybe you are watching in the afternoon or in the evening, you were not there that Sunday when I preached this sermon. And that is why I feel so free to preach it to you. And another reason is because I feel the need for you to hear what I spoke about because of the importance of the subject. Now the advantage you have though, over those who heard me in church, is that because of time constraint, what they heard was an abbreviated version of the sermon that you are hearing today. You will be the ones to hear the full sermon you are blessed to hear it, just like I'm grateful to God for giving me the opportunity to preach it. Kindly give me your undivided attention now so you can get the best out of what God has to share with you today. What I want to do today is turn our focus to a current issue that is facing us as a people, especially people of God. I realize that many people that are watching me today are watching me from many countries around the world. The truth is this, wherever you are watching from, what you are about to hear concerns all of us as a people, regardless of where you live. You know, every Wednesday, every Thursday, and every Friday, we have prayer in New York and many people across the world join us. Now, if you've been part of that prayer line, you know that for most of last year, during these prayers, one of the things we pleaded with God for is for God to give wisdom to the scientists to be able to find a solution to this coronavirus through the manufacture of a vaccine. We prayed that prayer so many days, on and on and on and on and on. 
And as expected, last year, around December, God answered our prayers. Now three companies in the United States have come up with the vaccines. And a couple of other companies in different parts of the world have also come up with vaccines. There is even a company that is testing some capsules that they believe can destroy the virus in the human body. What a breakthrough. Those who prayed in faith cannot but attribute these speedy breakthroughs to answers to prayers. Now there comes a problem now. The problem is this. If you assembled all the people that prayed those prayers, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe in Sundays in some churches, and you ask them, how many of them are afraid to take the vaccine? You will be surprised that more than half of those who attribute the vaccine to answers to their prayers, more than half of them, believe it or not, are afraid to take the vaccine. Look at it now. Look at it now. They prayed to God for a solution. God sent down the solution. Now, these same people who prayed to see God's answer now look at it as a problem. What I just described is a common problem we find in the family of faith. And that is what I want to talk to you today in my sermon titled, When God's Answer is Seen as a Problem. Yeah, you, got, you heard me right. When God's answer is seen as a problem. Let me describe it to you again. A problem presents itself. God's people cry to God for a solution. And in mercy, God sends an answer to the problem. But sadly, the reaction of God's people that prayed for the solution that God gives, their reaction, sadly, is one of doubt, is one of fear, and is one of filling the gaps. They just are scared to death for the solution that God sent. That is what we find in so many scriptures. And I'm afraid that's what we are seeing today about the vaccine that God allowed the scientists to put before us, which I believe strongly is in response to our prayers. So what I'm going to do is take you through the scriptures and show you one scripture after the other. At least I'll show you three different examples of where God mercifully gave an answer. And instead of, instead of the answer making people to be excited, to clap their hands and give God the glory, they look at the answer suspiciously. They look at the answer with fear. Nothing is new under the heavens. Let me take you to the book of Acts of the Apostles. In chapter 12, I'm reading in verse number 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, this is a passage of scripture we all know very, very well. It was a great, great time of persecution in the church and against the church. James had just been killed, and Peter was next in line to be killed. And out of concern that another one of their own will be killed by Easter, the church came together praying without ceasing that God will release locked up P. 
Peter, does that sound like what you and me and other believers around the world have been doing for months? For many, 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 many months, almost a year now, we have all, as it were, been kept in prison. We have all, as it were, been locked down and locked out of what we used to do. Coronavirus has shut us in like Peter was shut in. But we have done what those believers did. We have prayed without season. As groups, we have prayed without season. As individuals, begging God for a solution to this pandemic. As it were, pleading with God for a release, pleading with God for a solution, pleading with God for a resolution to the problem of coronavirus, just like they did for the release of Peter. Well, let me go back to the story and then I'll make my application. As the story went, the angel came and the angel in answer to their prayers released Peter. And as he was released, he headed straight to where the church was praying. I even doubt if he ever knew that they were praying for him. Just like I am sure that many people don't know that this vaccine breakthrough is an answer to prayers. I'm not sure if CDC is aware that believers were praying. I'm not sure if Moderna or Pfizer or Johnson and Johnson and other pharmaceutical companies are aware how fervently believers were praying for this breakthrough. Anyway, we give God the praise. Here came Peter. The answer to their fervent prayers. And praise God also today. Here came the vaccines. Days and weeks ago. One after the other. One after the other. One after the other. You know what God did? We prayed for vaccine. But God did not just give us one vaccine. The breakthrough he gave us. Several vaccines. Believers everywhere. We're praying for vaccine, but God gave us more than we prayed for. I give him the praise for that. He inspired not just one, not just two or three, but several drug companies to get a breakthrough in the production of vaccine. But you know what amazes me? The reaction of the saints of God to the answers that God gave them to their prayers was exactly like that of the saints in the Acts of the Apostles. Very similar reaction. Let me show it to you in a minute. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, in verse number 13, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, and when she came and she heard and she knew Peter's voice, she opened up the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. You are crazy. Something is wrong with you. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, that's not Peter. He has to be his ghost. He has to be his angel. But you know what Peter kept on doing? He just kept on knocking away, knocking away, knocking away. And then they had to come to the door. And the Bible says when they had opened the door and they saw him, they were astonished. Listen to this, folks. They prayed for Peter. God gave them Peter. But they said it was Peter's angel. 
not Peter, the assembled prayer warriors, believe it or not, they resorted to name calling and rebuking of Rhoda, who brought them the good news. It took a lot of convincing that day for them to believe it was indeed the answer to their prayers that stood knocking at their doorstep. Do you see the parallel that I'm alluding to today? It's easy to see. Here it is. We prayed for vaccine for the world. God gave the world not just vaccine, but vaccines. But now, like the prayer warriors that prayed for Peter, you know, you can easily get rebuked by some people if you encourage them to take this vaccine. You can get rebuked by some people if you advise them, go ahead and get your jab. And you can even be called names, like Rhoda was called names. Many of those who prayed for solution to coronavirus are saying all kinds of things that show their doubt that God has answered their prayers, just like the prayer warriors in the book of Acts. And in many, 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 many areas of our lives, these things hold true. I said to you earlier, I'm preaching to you today on when God's answer is seen as a problem. Well, Peter's case is not the only biblical example of people praying and getting an answer, and the answer led to doubts, the answer led to fears in their hearts. Do you mind if I show you another example? Come with me. It's the amazing reaction to a blessing that God gave a family in Israel. Let's go to the Old Testament. And I will read to you, first of all, the blessing that was given. And you'll be amazed. The reaction of these good people to the blessings of God. Judges chapter 13, I'm reading from verse number one. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. And then the angel went ahead and told her the do's and the don'ts. In verse 4, the angel said, Now listen now, Beware, I pray thee, drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not anything that is unclean. Now, we can preach a whole sermon on that, but I'm going to leave that alone. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Now, you know just that. This was an amazing promise of the birth of Samson. All right? So what happened? The woman came and told her husband, who was not there when the angel was talking to her, saying, a man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me, told he me his name. So what happened? He said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite of God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah said, I miss that. Then he entreated God. This is so beautiful. 
But verse 8 says, Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child when that child is born. And amazingly, condescending God, amazing God. The Bible says, God hearkened unto the voice of Manoah. And the angel of the Lord came again unto the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Hey, he's back again, the man that appeared to me the first time, and he's in the field. So he went to the angel, and they had a discussion. I wish I had time. But really, time will fail me to tell the details of what transpired uh, that day. But for sure, he asked the heavenly visitor questions, and the angel confirmed what he had told the woman earlier, and he left. Talk about a confirmation. Our God is a good God. When he tells you something, and you need a confirmation, you ask him, and you'll be surprised. He will confirm it for you again. So what was the reaction of the man? That's where I'm going. You ask, was his reaction that of jubilation? Was his reaction that of excitement? Was his reaction that of thanksgiving? I wish. Oh, how I wish. Don't you just wish that answers from God will stop being looked at as a problem? That was exactly what the man did in the story that we just read. Look at what happened in verse 22. And Manoah said unto his wife, Oh my, we shall surely die because we have seen God. You know, why do God's people come up with reactions like this? after God blesses them with what they've been looking for for a long time. This man was sure, absolutely sure, that God was going to kill them as a result of the experience that they just had. Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die. What can be surer than that? Because we have seen God. He said, we are going to die. The circumstances connected to the answer God gave us, surely it will kill us. Does that sound like coronavirus to you? Sounds like it to me. Many people will say, yes, we prayed for a solution. Yes, we specifically asked for a vaccine. But, if we take this vaccine, we will surely die. That's how people feel. And I say, come on, reason it out. You prayed for it. You believe God for it. God gave it to you. And now you're running away from your answer. You don't want to get your answer. Come on. This is exactly what this man did. And they tell us, don't take it all, don't take it, don't take it. If you take it, it will kill you. It's going to kill us. It's going to kill our ability to have children. We're going to become sterile. It's going to kill off our race. That's what some people in my race tell me. It's a, it's a manipulation to wipe us out completely from the face of the earth. And other people come up with all kinds of the reasons why you must not take it is going to do this, is going to do that, is going to do that one. You can fill in the gap. There are dozens of things that people are saying are spreading about the answer to the prayers that you prayed and about the answers to the prayers that I pray. Who does that remind you of? Samson's father to be. But thank God for his wife who did what I call logical thinking. Did you hear what I call it? Logical thinking. Look at what the woman said to her fearful husband in Judges chapter 13, verse 23. 
But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he will not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither will he have showed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things as this. What a beautiful answer this woman gave. I want all the men that are watching me today to please forgive me, but I have to tell you something. It looks like our women that we call the weaker vessels are stronger vessels in many, 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 many areas of life, especially in the area of logical reasoning and logical thinking. If God were pleased to kill us, the woman logically reasoned, then he will not have received our burnt offering. He will not have received our meat offering he will not have told us we will have a baby. How can we die and still have a baby, my husband? Think about that. Don't you believe what he said? He said, we're going to have a baby. And now you are saying we are going to die. Those two things don't make any sense together. He will not have told us how to take care of ourselves. He will never have told us how to take care of the baby. When God's answer becomes a problem to the recipients of the answer. Maybe in this case, I should even say, when God's answer becomes an imaginary problem. Begin to think about this and you begin to think about that. What happened to Noah, I'm afraid is replicating itself in our lives today. Can I repeat at the risk of sounding redundant today? We prayed for an answer to coronavirus. God gave us an answer to coronavirus. Now we are afraid that the answer that God gave us will kill all of us. That is fear, folks. And fear with faith don't walk together. Mm -mm. Now, talking about fear, that leads me to another example. And I want to show you in this example the effect that fear can have on us regarding things that we really ought to be strong about and will become so weak things we should be excited about. We are unable to because we have been crippled by fear. This time my example is about these disciples of Christ who actually should know better. And I'll prove to you why they should know better in Luke chapter 24. I'm reading there in verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself, stood in the midst of them. And Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified. Can you believe that? They were frightened because they supposed they had seen a spirit. That's what they supposed. They were afraid. Oh, you say if you are you too, Bishop, you'll be afraid. I'll show you why they should not have been afraid. They were frightened, they were terrified, and they mistook Jesus to be a spirit. But you know what Jesus Christ said to them in verse 38? Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? I will explain to you momentarily why that answer was so appropriate. The Prince of Peace came. He came among the apostles. Not only did he come in person, but he came also and proclaimed peace unto them. Shalom, peace be unto you, was a proclamation that he gave them. And their reaction is pictured in verse 37. 
The Bible says they were terrified. The Bible says they were affrighted, thinking that it was a spirit that was among them. Doesn't that sound very, very familiar? Let me go back to the point I've been trying to make all day. The vaccine came to bring us the peace that we have not had for months. Some of us have been sick from coronavirus. It was God that spared our lives. Some of us know people that lost their lives as a result of coronavirus. But now came the answer to our prayers. Instead of jubilation, many are very fearful <laughs> but are very, very suspicious of the answer God gave. Now, these apostles thought they had seen a spirit and they were afraid. You say, Bishop, I don't blame them. Well, let me show you why I blame them. Let's even suppose it was a spirit. All right? Let's suppose it was not Christ. A spirit came, bang, among them and said abracadabra or something. Their fear was unjustified. You know why their fear was unjustified? Jesus had already given them power over all spirits several chapters before now. So why didn't they just apply what Christ said to them in Luke chapter 10, in verse 18 and in verse 19? Let me read it to you. I think it will bless you. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, to tread on scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well then, with such power, with such authority, they needed not to have been so afraid of any spirit. But here we are. They were so scared. They were so frightened. You know, this shows how powerful fear is. And only God knows how fearful people are about taking this vaccine. It's not because of the pain of the shot is a fear of the unknown about the vaccine. You know, fear makes you forget the words of God. Fear makes you forget the promises of God. Fear makes you to suspect the answers of God and the solutions of God. And that was what happened here. And the master had to rebuke them. Well, let me say this. I am not preaching today to rebuke you. Not at all. I'm preaching today to reason with you. So that we can reason together. And you can think about it again. If you belong to those people. Who are so afraid. To take the vaccine. Can I remind, remind you of what we did? So you've said it so many times. I want to keep on saying it until you get it. We pray to God. And when I say we, I mean the body of Christ all around the world. We all pray to God. I remember seeing images of believers on their knees in parks. Images of believers on their knees on streets crying to God to give us a solution. So God, in his mercy, because he said, ask and you shall receive. He says, seek and you shall find. He said, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. He said, call on me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. The Lord is my helper. We shall not want of a solution to a pandemic. So what did God do? God gave us an answer. Do you know what? If we pray and God gave us an answer, do you think we can be justified 
by being afraid of and rejecting the answer that God gives? No. I think the question of Jesus Christ to the apostles is a very appropriate question here. You know what his question to them was? Jesus asked them, why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? If you can get rid of negative thoughts in your heart about issues of life, you will be totally free from fear. They were thinking, well, we are done. How can you be done with all that you still need to do for God? Why are you reasoning like this? Can I ask you a question today? A very direct question. Are you afraid of the vaccine? Honestly, are you afraid of taking the vaccine? Let me ask you the same question that Jesus Christ asked as a follow-up question to that. Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Why are we troubled? Why do thoughts arise in our hearts? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and answer that question. Why we are troubled? And why thoughts arise in our hearts? I think that majorly, majorly, the problem is that we have listened to many myths and we have believed them. We have looked into social media. Text messages have gone around so many times till you cannot even forward them more than one time again. We have listened to many, many conspiracy theories and we have believed them. We have listened to old women's fables about how bad the vaccines are and we have believed them. We have listened to all kinds of things on television that the vaccines will sterilize us, that the vaccines will wipe out the human race as we know it, all kinds of nonsense. That some rich people somewhere feel that there are too many people in the world, so let's use this vaccine to sterilize everybody. And you as a believer, you believe that. You're a child of God. That nothing shall by any means be able to hurt you. That even if you take poison, that even if you take poison, it will not hurt you. And you believe that. We have listened to all kinds of things. We have been told that these vaccines come with terrible allergic reactions. And I did a little study on it. An actual fact. Only one in 100,000 recipients of the vaccine will ever have any allergic reaction to it. But somebody puts an allergic reaction on social media and they send that around a million times and everybody is so scared. Look at it, oh, don't take it, oh, never take this, oh, they were going to die, oh, whether we like it or not, we are not a manoa. We have seen the answer to our prayers, and here comes death. They even tell us, you better watch out now. They rushed this vaccine to get it out fast so it can start wreck wrecking havoc fast. Oh yeah? When in actual fact, the reason this vaccine came out so fast for a solution so fast is that all the red tape that these things go through, all the government red tape that these uh, kind of vaccines go through to get approved, they lay them aside. They, they slow those things down so that they can get this done and reduce the number of people that are dying. It was a quick release, all right? The quick release of this vaccine was due to the lessening of 
government bureaucracy, red tape, and the drug manufacturers also uh, speeding things up to make sure that you don't die, that I don't die, that our families remain the same. Yes, the vaccine came out earlier than normal, and the world may give credit to themselves. But if I may interject at this point, what the secular world will not give glory for is the God factor, the God factor, the answers to prayers factor. I believe is the reason, or at least one reason, or I may even say the number one reason why we are here with these vaccines. You prayed for it, God sent down the answers, and he sent down the answers speedily. You know what I laugh about all the time? If the government did not do anything, if the vaccines are not here now, the same people that are complaining and are saying these vaccines came out too fast, there must be something bad about it, the same people will be complaining. Now, why is the vaccine not here? What are they doing? Can they come out with a solution to this problem? Now, can, can you see how difficult it is to please man? Did you hear the story in my village about uh, what happened many, many years ago? I'll tell it to you. See, many, 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 many years ago, I believe that was around 1967, maybe 1968, somewhere around there during the Nigerian Civil War period. It was a bad war, as you know. Brothers fighting brothers. I mean, you had to be from the eastern part of Nigeria to see what brothers can do to brothers. And it was bad. People died of famine. People died of bullets. People, it was, it was awful. And I was in high school then. So one day, <laughs> one day, one day, one day, the federal soldiers came to my village. Are you listening to me? The federal soldiers came to my, my own village. I told you I'm from the village. Now, I wasn't around. I was gone in high school because I went to a boarding school. It was when I came back home that they were telling me, my father and my mother were telling me this story. And honestly, I couldn't stand to laugh. I had to roll on the floor to, to laugh. This was what happened. The federal government of my country, Nigeria, took all the federal soldiers and sent them to villages because there were woods, there were bushes, there were forests where they could be trained on the art of warfare. My village was surrounded by thick woods, thick bush, thick forest. So they chose our village to be a training ground for the federal soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, one day the soldiers showed up in the village and they were singing their song. They were singing their songs and they stormed the village. Guess what happened to my dad? Guess what happened to my mom? Guess what happened to everybody in the village? They ran for their lives. They ran into the bush. They ran to the farms. They ran and hid under palm trees. They ran and hid under cocoa trees and under cola nut trees. And I asked my dad, I said, Daddy, you mean you did not sleep inside the house? He said, house for where? He said, I didn't sleep inside the house. So I said, what happened to my mother? He said, for a while, I didn't know where she was. Because we all ran different ways. When we saw the soldiers with their guns in their hands, I said, you slept in the bush? He said, yes, I slept in the bush. I said, with the snakes and the rest of them? He said, yes, I did. He said, who will want to be killed by the soldiers? They thought it was the Biafran force that overran the village. Then when the people came, they saw nobody in the village. They went from dot. It was only one man that said, if they want to kill me, let them kill me in my house. I'm not running anywhere. So he stayed in the house. And he said, come and kill me. 
So they went to him and they greeted him so nice. They greeted him like good people. They greeted him like friends. And they said, Mr. So-and-so, I can almost tell you the name of this man. He's, he's gone to his reward now, but it won't make any sense to you if I mention his name to you. And they asked him, they said, what happened to everybody in the village? And he said, they all ran away. Ah, they said, we are not enemies, we are friends. Why are they running from us? So the federal soldiers, they had to stop everything they were doing. They had to stop the training. And they were going from bush to bush, making announcement. Hey, everybody hiding. We are federal soldiers. We are your friends. Come out of your hiding and go into your houses. I asked my dad, I said, did you come out? He said, I thought they were deceiving us. So I hunkered down and I was looking at them. Come out, come out. Until one or two or three people came out and the man that they found in the house, all right, also came out and went from bush to bush. Some of them went far from the civilization of the village. There's anything like civilization in the village. And the man came out and helped the federal soldiers. And finally, my father came back home. My mother came back home. And the soldiers had packages of food uh, that they had with them that they gave the villagers. You know, th that was their ration to eat. So they gave the villagers, and the villagers were looking at them suspiciously. That, are you sure you are not Biafran soldiers? Uh, the soldiers from the other said, no, we are your people. There's nothing to be afraid of. And then they all came back home, but they missed the night and they slept in the bush. Only their dogs and their pets were left. They did not even have time to take their pets with them. The point I'm trying to make is this, folks. Fear of the unknown can kill you. These people that came to the village were friends. They were not enemies. And I believe that this vaccination is like those federal soldiers that you are running into the bush for. Vaccination, I believe, is the way this disease will go away. We all want our lives back. God wants to give us our lives back. I believe the vaccine is a fast track to getting our lives back. You see, signs now at the end of the tunnel. There, there are lights that I can see at the end of this coronavirus tunnel because of these vaccines. The CDC right now, as I preach, is now releasing rules uh, that coronavirus has forced them to make. Now they are relaxing it. The doors have been carefully, methodically, uh, method, methodically. Ah! See, my story has taken English from me. Systematically, it's now allowing them to be able to open the doors that they had shut because you prayed and because God answered the prayers. Why will you continue to be like the prayer warriors in the house of Mary? Why will you continue to pray and still walk in unbelief and still walk in fear? And quite frankly, quite frankly, if you have ever experienced this virus, or known of anyone who has, you won't need much convincing to go and take this vaccine. Listen, if you decide not to take the vaccine, the question I always ask is, what if? Seriously, it's a big if, but what if? What if the suggestions that I'm hearing from some quarters ever come to pass? You know the suggestions I'm hearing from some quarters that I hope will not come to pass, but can easily come to pass. What if some countries don't let you enter into their borders without a COVID-19 vaccination card? What of, the, what of that? What if that happens? Just like a foreigner now cannot enter into some countries without the yellow card for the yellow fever vaccination, just like the children cannot enter school now without proper proof of vaccination. These are possibilities, even though they are big ifs. If what I just described ever comes true, I don't know what many will do. Maybe you just have to stay in your country and never have to go anywhere. When somebody said, Bishop, all right, I agree. 
but I'll have to pray about it first so I can be led by the Spirit as to whether to take this vaccine or not. All right? <laughs> That's funny. You want to pray to be led by the Spirit whether you should take it or not. This is the first time ever that I'm hearing somebody praying about embracing an answer that God gave them to their prayers. Now the point is this as I close. I am not here to speak as an agent of CDC today. No. Neither are the vaccine companies giving me shares for talking like I'm talking today. The truth is this. No matter what anyone says, you will still do what you feel like doing and what you think is right. I've only come here today from the example of Peter and the example of the father of Samson. Sometimes God's answers to our prayers triggers fear, triggers disbelief, and triggers suspicion. Guess what? The final decision is up to you. That's the truth. The final decision is up to you. And that is a right that you have that no one can ever take away from you. My prayer is that whatever you decide to do, you will decide in the plan and the will of God for your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you because the truth of God has been made plain. I just pray for your people that they will make the right choice as to what to do with this answer to prayers. Father, let this be the beginning of the end of coronavirus as we know it, that our lives may return to normal. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week by the grace of God. Don't forget to go online, www.freshanointing.org slash give online. Be a blessing to this ministry. God will be a blessing to you also. Bye-bye. For prayers or counseling, please call 917-655-0240. Please visit our website. That's www.freshanointing.org. Please connect with us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash International Church dash New York. Our location in New York is 182-10 Liberty Avenue, Queens, New York, 11433. To give, please visit freshanointing.org slash give online. To purchase Bishop's books, that's deliveranceplace.com slash products.html. And for other resources, please visit www.deliveranceplace.com. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. I just want to go where I'm only breathing your air Father, hear my prayer, take me there, take me there I just want to see you rather than I'm used to Finally see it clear, take me there, take me there, take me there